This is an example of how to use code facades to separate generated code from the database names. So by default, generated code uses the names that you define for your objects, both fields and tables, to generate code in C-sharp. However, you can separate that if for some reason you wish to have your database names different than your code names. Many times this will show up in the fact that database names are very esoteric or odd or the fact that they were named many years ago and you really don't want to have that name inside of your C-sharp code. So what we can do is we can actually mask them with a property called uh, code facade. So uh, both tables and fields have them. So let's take a look at how that would work. We have a category table and the category table has a description field. So if we go to our example project, we can actually define a category. Let's just have it there. And so it has a description field. Now this compiles just fine because we have a category table and it has a description field. So let's go back over to our model and let's name the description not the description. Let's name the code facade something like a uh, other field. Okay. Now, the database name will be description. Inside of SQL Server, when you look at the category table, it will have a description field. However, we're going to regenerate this. And then rebuild it. and notice that it actually failed. It failed because there's no longer a description property in our code. If we look at that, it doesn't exist anymore. However, there is a field called other field and this will build just fine. Now, nowhere inside of here, other than that tooltip, are you going to see description inside of your generated code. And this is the default tooltip and you can actually change that if you set the description, if you set the description of the description right here. This will actually define the IntelliSense for it. But uh, for right now, it's just called other field. And uh, we can also do that for a table. So a table might have a name in the database that we don't like very much. The category is very nice, but a lot of people preface their, their tables with names like TBL category. And maybe in code, you don't want to see TBL everything in the world. So you might rename it with a code facade. So we're just going to take this and rename category table. Now the category stays the same because that's what we want it to be named in the database. However, um, maybe we want to name it my category. Now in code, it's going to be called my category. In the database, it'll be called category. So we will regen this. All the files will jump into our project explorer. and it's done generating. Okay, let's compile just this one project. And what happens? That compiles fine. Now let's compile our test application. Fail. Apparently there's no such thing as category. However, there is a my category. So Let's compile this, and it compiles just fine. Now, inside of code, there is no category object. There's a my category object. And we can take this paradigm and rename all of our tables and all of our uh, fields if we wish. There's actually a shortcut for doing some of this. Since some databases actually have a pattern for the way they name things. Like I mentioned earlier, tables are named TBL. Columns sometimes have a prefix. You can actually get a little wizard like on the columns node. If you right click and say update co uh, column code facades, you can say, I want to replace this prefix. I want to make it uppercase, lowercase, um, and other options. And you can do the same thing for tables. If I wanted to, re if all these tables were prefixed with TBL, I could say update table code facades and by default a lot of people use TBL so I'm using it here. Uh, I can say remove the prefix TBL for the code facades. So there's actually a wizard for doing this uh, across the entire model if you wish. And that's how you map uh, code generated names to database names and make them different.